Back in 1981, Dodge unveiled their new Ram trucks and vans, and everything was fine and dandy until Dodge realized that sales were decreasing year over year and they needed to do something to spice their truck up. Competition between Ford and GM trucks was very stiff, and Dodge needed a way to make a name for themselves. What's up guys, my name is Bryce with Dust Runners Automotive Journal, and today I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about Cummins. In 1989, Dodge teamed up with Cummins to provide diesel engines in their Ram trucks. The Cummins name is credited with having saved Dodge trucks in the late 80s, and today more than 80% of Dodge 2500 trucks are sold with Cummins engines, and that percentage is even higher for Dodge 3500 trucks. When the 6BT Cummins was debuted in 1989, it was an absolute game changer. Although it was used in the outdated Dodge AD chassis, it gave the Ram trucks a new foothold in the pickup truck market. The 6BT packed a turbo, direct injection, and 400 pound-feet of torque, which was more than anything the competition offered at the time. With the new Cummins options for Ram trucks, Dodge began to see an increase in sales for the first time since the Ram's launch in 1981. It should be noted that the Cummins-equipped Ram was not the first Dodge pickup to feature a diesel engine. Back in 1978 and 1979, the D-Series trucks were available with an optional Mitsubishi diesel engine. In the first year that the Cummins engine option was available, they sold nearly 18,000 trucks with that engine, which was nearly double what analysts had predicted. Offering 160 horsepower, the 5.9 Cummins is pretty weak by today's standards. However, at the time of its release, GM 6.2 liter produced a mere 130 horsepower and Ford's Navistar 7.3 liter output 185 horsepower. This put the 5.9 Cummins right in between its two competitors. However, the Cummins did offer more torque than both of those engines, coming in at 400 pound-feet of torque. The 5.9 Cummins high torque output is what made it incredibly attractive in the late 80s and early 90s and what allowed it to sell very, very well. On top of that, it was known for being extremely reliable and durable and simple and easy to work on. The 6BT's foundation begins with with a sleeveless cast iron block with an integrated oil cooler and oil pump cavity, as well as a camshaft bore that doesn't call for pressed in bearings. For increased wear resistance, the forged steel crankshaft fillets and journals were treated to induction hardening and the crank was anchored in place via 14 mil main cap bolts. At the heart of the 5.9 Cummins is a Bosch VE rotary injection pump, which is driven by a gear on the back of the camshaft. The mechanical fuel system is very outdated by today's standards where everything uses an electronic fuel system, but for the 5.9 Cummins, this was an awesome feature. This pump created injection pressure of up to 17,000 PSI in totally stock form. One of the really cool parts about a mechanical fuel injection system is the mechanical part of it. There's no electronics involved with it, meaning everything is fully mechanical, which means basically every single part of it can be tweaked modified and upgraded. Although you can't just plug a tuner into it and crank up the power, if you have some basic tools, you can easily crank up the fueling and crank up the power on a 5.9 Cummins. On all first gen 5.9 Cummins, you'll find a fixed geometry journal bearing whole set H1C turbocharger. There are some variances of this turbocharger from 1989 to 1993, but for the most part, they're all very similar. Underneath the cast iron head, you'll find cast aluminum direct injection pistons, which feature a large bowl for fuel to be injected directly into. Underneath the beefy pistons, you'll find forged I-beam connecting rods, which are necessary for coping with the massive torque at low RPM. These connecting rods are known to hold up to over 1,500 pound-feet of torque in aftermarket applications. With stricter emission standards being in place in 1994, Dodge needed to update the Cummins engine inside the Ram to meet these new standards. For the most part, the updated 5.9 Cummins was very similar to the Cummins used in the 1989 to 1993 Ram trucks. However, it received a major fuel system overhaul. The addition of the Bosch 7100 pump, also known as the P-Pump, allowed the fuel system that have higher injection pressure, which cut down particulate matter produced in cylinder. Aside from the P-Pump, the updated Cummins also received a revised turbocharger, revised pistons, and a big intercooler. At this point, with the second gen Ram launching and the new updated 5.9 Cummins, Dodge had really changed the heavy-duty pickup truck market. Up until Ford released the 7.3 Power Stroke in 1994, the Cummins was the leader in torque output for five years straight. Although the P-Pump was initially added for emissions purposes, the massive increase in flow and pressure made it really easy to crank up the power on the updated 5.9 Cummins. While the VE pump on the early Cummins only had one plunger, the P-Pump has six plungers, one for each cylinder. Nearly every internal component of the P-Pump can be upgraded or modified in some way. The 1994 Cummins powered Rams featured a modified version of the whole set H1C turbocharger found on the earlier Cummins, and in 1995 that turbo was scrapped entirely in favor of the whole set HX35W 
better known as the HX35. This turbo is known for being super reliable even when it's pushing twice the boost that it was initially designed for. Aside from the P-Pump and the updated turbocharger, the updated 5.9 Cummins also received more emission-friendly pistons which featured a revised piston bowl for more complete combustion. The camshaft was also updated for more durability. By the time the late 90s rolled around, the 5.9 Cummins was once again struggling to keep up with stricter emission standards and required a hardware update. Midway through 1998, the 5.9 ISB engine, also known as the 24 valve, was released. Now the updated 24 valve engine featured an electronically controlled fuel system which was completely different from previous 5.9 Cummins which featured a fully mechanical fuel injection system. It also featured a 24 valve head, an updated turbocharger, new fueling components, and some other hardware updates, all of which were designed to improve emissions output. The base power for the 24 valve was up to 245 horsepower and 505 pound-feet of torque depending on the model year. Inside the 24 valve you'll find the same I-beam connecting rods found in previous Cummins engines as well as revised and improved pistons. The 4 valve head massively improves airflow and coolant flow and featured 60 pound per inch valve springs, reshaped exhaust ports for improved exhaust flow, and 6 12 mil head bolts per cylinder. A one piece valve cover with a reusable gasket also replaced the 12 valve 6 individual valve covers which were a pain in the butt to deal with. The whole set HX35W turbocharger was carried over from the earlier 5.9 Cummins onto the 24 valve, all 5.9 ISB engines with the manual transmission and 1998 and a half to 2000 engines with the 47 RE automatic transmission. For emissions purposes the automatic transmission equipped Cummins were equipped with the HY35W in 2001 and 2002 which is a little bit more restrictive on the exhaust side which led to a quicker spool but less flow at high RPM. Both turbos use a T3 turbine inlet flange but the HX35W's is divided while the HY35W's flange is non-divided. Unfortunately, the updated 24 valve engine wasn't without its issues. Every version of the 5.9 Cummins we've talked about so far suffers from the killer dowel pin problem. Unfortunately for the 24 valve, that's not the only major problem. The 53 block problem caused a lot of 24 valve engines from 1999 to 2001 to suffer from block cracking. Approximately 100,000 crankcases were cast with thinner water jacket walls than what was found on the earlier and later model engines. Now these problematic blocks are easily identifiable with the large 53 cast right onto the front of the block. Cracks on the block typically start under the freeze plugs, which can lead to coolant leakage when the engine is working hard or exposed to increased cylinder pressure. These blocks are not guaranteed to fail, but they were much more likely to fail and Dodge ended up replacing quite a few of them under warranty. Yet again in 2002 the 5.9 was again struggling to meet emission standards and Dodge needed an updated Cummins engine. Now this is where the 2003 to 2007 common rail 5.9 engine comes into play. Where the 5.9 was once an entirely mechanical engine the common rail version was entirely dependent on electronics to run properly. Now the new electronically controlled common rail fuel system featured a Bosch CP3 high pressure fuel pump and solenoid actuated multi-event injectors which made the Cummins quieter, cleaner, and more powerful than ever before. Now even though there was a massive update which added a ton of electronics, at the end of the day it was still a solid and reliable 5.9 Cummins. Although it was born from the need for better emissions, the Common Rail 5.9 offered a big increase in performance compared to previous 5.9s, upping power to 305 horsepower and 555 pound-feet of torque. The Bosch CP3 featured on the Common Rail 5.9 was a radial piston pump comprised of three cam driven plungers, a high pressure and a low pressure circuit, a hardened steel housing, and a fuel pressure regulator. Unlike the VP44 pump on earlier engines, the CP3 pump's primary responsibility is to produce and regulate high pressure fuel for the injectors to use. It isn't directly involved with controlling injection timing or fuel volume. While it's still driven by the front gear train, the CP3 isn't timed to either the crank or the camshaft. Now, the Common Rail 59 also features new Bosch solenoid activated injectors which were fired electronically rather than mechanically like the earlier 5.9 engines. Like previous 5.9 Cummins updates, the common rail version of this engine received revised pistons which were designed to work properly with the new injection system. This was accomplished by revising the fuel bowl area for more efficient combustion. Anticipating significantly more in-cylinder heat, Cummins added an oil cooler gallery on 2004 and later pistons. In 2003, Cummins replaced the whole set HX35W with the whole set 
HE341CW. This turbo was later replaced by the HE351W, which featured an electronically controlled wastegate. Ultimately, the common rail 5.9 Cummins was not able to keep up with stricter emission standards and was completely scrapped in favor of the 6.7 Cummins in 2007. Similar to the LMM Duramax and the 6.4 Power Stroke, the 6.7 Cummins had a lot of new emissions components during this clean diesel era. The two major additions included an exhaust gas recirculation system as well as a diesel particulate filter. Unfortunately, these new emissions components were necessary and they did decrease reliability of the 6.7 engine. Of course, the increased displacement brought with it an all new block, internals, and all new architect. The deep skirt block features a rigid Siamese board design that the aftermarket would come to love thanks to superb strength. In case you didn't already know, a Siamese board design just entails lack of channels for coolant to circulate between cylinders which improves cylinder stability and it's overall a stronger design. With the increased displacement and new design, the 6.7 Cummins output way more power than the 5.9 Cummins ever did, outputting 350 horsepower and 650 pound-feet of torque. Interestingly enough, the 6.7 Cummins was the first Cummins engine where the high output model was not restricted to the manual transmission models, a feature which wasn't found on earlier Cummins but was featured on GM and Ford diesel engines of the time was a variable turbocharger which the 6.7 did end up getting. The whole set HE35WVE was the first variable turbocharger featured on a Cummins engine and it helped give the 6.7 more bottom end power, more top end power, and the ability to exhaust brake. Unfortunately, the increased stroke and variable turbocharger pushing way more boost led to more head gasket issues with the 6.7 Cummins in comparison to the 5.9 Cummins. That's not to say that it blows head gaskets all the time but it did go through head gaskets a lot more often than previous Cummins engines. A similar version of the Bosch common rail injection system found on the 5.9 Cummins was also used on the 6.7 Cummins. The revised injectors are said to be more reliable than the versions used on the 5.9 common rail. When compared to the 5.9's fuel system, the 6.7's fuel rail, rail feed lines, and injector lines also measure 50% larger. Now, as I said before, the 6.7 Cummins was the first Cummins engine to feature an EGR and a diesel particulate filter. Unfortunately, the EGR system like many diesel EGR systems, was known for sticking and clogging up EGR coolers. The diesel particulate filter, better known as DPF, works by trapping diesel particulates in a chamber in the exhaust system downstream. Now, the particulates are eventually burned off through a process called regeneration, which uses diesel fuel to raise the temperature to more than 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit in order to incinerate the contents within the DPF. And as of right now, that's pretty much it for the Cummins Ram relationship. But I want to know what you guys think. Do you think the 5.9 is better than the 6.7? Do you think the Cummins kind of sucks compared to what GM and Ford have to offer? Be sure to let me know down in the comments below. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.